Verse the next part of Mishnah 19, the Dalif Nehemiah Ta'amal. Know before whom you are working. Umi hu ba and who is the owner of this work, your employer. Should know who your employer is. Shishalem lachas chapulatecha. The one who's going to pay you a reward for your labor. You know, um, above shuls, above the ark, not over here because we've got a funny ark. But in every other shul, normal shul in the world, you'll have a little something above Shavita, Hashem, Negi Tamid, etc. And in some shuls, you'll have Dalifne, Miata, Omed. Know before whom you stand. The Baal Shem Tov was the absolute master of the comma. And with a single comma, he could change the meaning of a verse completely. And he took this verse, Da Lifne Miata Omed. Uh, so, Da, da Mala Mala Mincha. Know, know that which is above you. That, that's a Da Mala Mala Mincha. He said, Da Mala Mala, comma, Mincha. Know that that which is above. Minchad comes from you. In other words, you influence what happens above. To a certain extent, we all write our own history or the history of the universe. Our actions impact upon above and refracts back to us again. Dhamma comma, mimcha. That was his great comma in that verse over there. By the way, the best verse I've ever seen above an ark was in the little shul, the adjunct shul, the new shul that was built alongside the Claremont shul in South Africa. Claremont, the old Claremont shul is a very old shul, uh, and, but they built a beautiful Beta Medrash with beautiful big windows and was backing right onto the Table Mountain, the back of Table Mountain. And therefore, above the ark, they said they put a sa ena el heharim and lift up my eyes to the mountains. <laughs> that was very appropriate. At any rate, says Rabbi El Azar, you should know before whom you are toiling over here. Well, it's one thing to work for an absent employer, but it's entirely different if the boss is actually sitting in the room together with you, because then you work a bit, a bit, a bit more conscientiously, and you also have a heightened awareness that the work that you're doing must be really important, because the boss actually wants to be there together with you. So where's the place of the Almighty in this world? Malekola olam bichvodo, the whole world is filled with his glory, he is everywhere. But as you know, the Shekhinah, the divine, the divine presence, rested and was Megaled, was revealed in the Holy of Holies. And says the Talmud, from the time that the, that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, the, the Almighty's place in the world, all he has are the Dalad Amot Shalalacha, only the four cubits of the Halacha. So that's where he wants to be. He wants to be in that place where the Halacha is being studied. So a Jew who sits down to study by himself or with a group of people, should realize that this is the place where the Almighty, the boss, actually wants to be and his presence is there together with you. And if you have the sense that God is actually present with you in the room, alongside you, although you can't sense it because we're not, uh, we're not sufficiently well attuned to be able to pick up those vibes, but if one could recognize that I could borrow that this is where this is the place he wants to be in the world, right there where you're sitting and studying with your Chavuta, struggling over a rushy, whatever it is, that's the place where he wants to be. That gives a whole different tone to the way in which you feel about the studying and you have a sense of awe as you sit there in the presence of the Almighty because that's the place he's chosen in this entire universe to be there together with you at that moment. And that's what Rabbi el means when he says, know before whom you are, before whom you are toiling uh, and who your employer is. The one has 